Hi, I'm Paige or Novice Cosplay, and today I'm going to walk you through how I made my Maka All Barn cosplay from Soul Eater, Scythe included. Uh, this was actually one of the first cosplays that I made, and it's mostly thrifted and modified. Modifying is one of the best ways to ease into cosplay and sewing, and so this is a great beginner cosplay. Now some of my footage and work in progress photos are a bit on the older side since I made this back in 2017, but my hope is that this will still give you some good ideas if you want to make your own Maka Albarn cosplay. So let's get started. Starting with the base layers of the button up, skirt, and tie. All of these were purchased on Amazon and AliExpress. The tie even matches her design almost perfectly, so I'll link as many as I can below. And for her shoes, I found these black strappy boots at a thrift store, and then I painted on all the white details with acrylic paint. They're not exact matches, but it does get the general idea across. Never stress out about 100% accuracy, because as you can see, the boots still look pretty good in photos. For the coat, I purchased a blazer at a thrift store, but it was obviously missing the entire capelet section. So I physically took the coat with me to Joanne's to find a black fabric that matched its texture as closely as possible. Then I just stitched a rectangle of fabric onto the backside of the coat. It was so simple. Her blazer doesn't have a lapel, however, so I folded that into the inside of the blazer and just top stitched around the collar edge. You could also take apart the blazer completely to remove it, but this method is a lot faster. And then for her white cuffs, I created two rectangles with some foam padding and machine stitched those onto the sleeves. Now maybe you've noticed the buttons. These aren't 100% accurate either, but they were some of the largest buttons I could find at Joann's and they happened to have a cross pattern that was kind of similar to Maka. I spray painted them silver and added black paint to the cross to help it stand out. The yellow vest was also thrifted, but when I tried it on, you could still see it at the top of her shirt. However, if you look at the references, it doesn't actually show past the coat. And I actually still need to fix that. So here is my thrifted yellow sweater. I cut off the top half of the sweater and serge the raw edges because knitted material can unravel pretty easily. Then I just took it in a bit on the side seams and zigzagged some half inch elastic at the top of the sweater piece to keep it from slipping down during the day. And now it only shows on the bottom. And now the moment most of you have probably been waiting for, the scythe. Unfortunately, I do not have a lot of whip photos of this, but it was really easy to make. The scythe blade is pink insulation foam board. It's lightweight and easy to sand, and it's literally just hot glued directly onto the PVC pipe. I then wrapped the entire thing in newspaper paper mache, and as you can see from this other prop I have in progress, the paper mache makes it really secure. For the silver details, I made a tube with cardstock paper, then wrapped that with two millimeter EVA foam. Just be warned, it's not the most sturdy. I cut out a slit and fit it over the scythe blade and PVC pipe, then closed up the bottom and top with more two millimeter EVA foam circles. The fin is just some six millimeter foam that I contact cemented directly on there. Contact cement is so strong that you really don't need anything else. I sprayed that all down with Plasti Dip and then silver paint, and of course I added a little bit of shading. The black details are all adhesive vinyl. You simply cut it out with scissors and then just stick it on. The eyeball is pretty lumpy, but it was clay that I molded, then coated with a layer of resin to make it look more glassy and three-dimensional. And finally, moving on to the triangle pattern on the scythe, I originally tried painting it, but the colors didn't pop very well and you could still see the paper mache texture. So I used super reflective red adhesive vinyl and glossy plain black vinyl as well. This was much faster than painting and I really love the effect, but I'm honestly not 100% sure to avoid the lumps and wrinkles that appeared. But that finishes up Soul. That is Soul and the entire costume, and if I can do it, you can do it. It's a great beginner cosplay, so I really hope you make it. Let me know if you do. Why don't we see how it turned out in some photos?